let's uh, let's get this started. Good evening, people. Okay, well, interesting, very very interesting update on the Italian tuna situation, as well as a uh, absolutely spectacular day here. I know no one believes that, but it's true. Well, look who's here, Mr. Mookie. Good evening. Well, I'm gonna, let's get right to it, all right? Because I know everyone's waiting. What could possibly, what could possibly be going on with the update? And um, let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. Probably not. Okay, we're going to get right started on it. Let's lower that stupid music just a little bit. Well, actually, Mookie kind of liked it. So, Well, as you uh, may know, for those of you who saw yesterday's crappy luxury live stream, I talked about uh, this brand of tuna, which I bought. And um, as I thoroughly explained and uh, announced yesterday. I don't speak Italian, so any incorrect pronunciation is to be uh, not given any importance because I don't speak Italian. But um, this brand, as we found out, which is called, actually, what's very interesting, I found this out today. You look over here. I thought it was A-S, one word, S, Oz, whatever, Domar. But I think that's an apostrophe. So it's A, a apostrophe S. But I, I don't know. I don't know what it means. And anyway, so the point is yesterday uh, I talked about this brand and reviewed it. And this is genuine tuna product of Italy, uh, you know, uh, cooked, canned, processed, everything in Sardinia. So um, it's the real thing, all right? And here's another, uh, another can. And it, I give it a nine out of 10. It is very good. Uh, 8.8 .8 or a 9. All right. Well, now, here's the thing. And uh, it's a proud product from Italy. Highly recommended uh, if you're looking for good tuna. Okay. Well, now, yesterday, somebody on the show mentioned, um, what about uh, Tonino? That's another brand, Italian brand name. And I said, well, you know, I've seen that, but I've never... Uh, it comes in a glass uh, jar, glass bottle, and uh, I never had it, never bought it, but uh, the brand sure sounds good, and it's the only brand I've seen with uh, tuna in a glass see-through jar. Wow, okay, let's take a look here. And that's this over here, Tonino. Uh, it says pole and line wild caught yellowfin tuna fillets in olive oil 6.7 ounces and this is a higher priced brand i don't remember the price i was at a very expensive upscale exclusive uh grocery store today and they carried this but um my cupboards are overflowing with tuna and salmon and sardines so maybe in the future i'll get this but anyway here's the deal you know so you go like wow look at this a tonino fantastic this, you know gonna be another italian from italy italian tuna fish brand well let's put a pause on this and let me go i got too many screens up okay let's uh, let's stop that for a moment by the way Let's say hello to Tommy. Rainbow Tomato Garden is where you buy the best canned fish in the world. Well, that's uh, yeah, I've never heard of that. I will look that up. Thank you for the info, Tommy. 
system of a clown. All your plastic wrapped cucumber needs are satisfied here. Well, we're going to talk about that. Thank you, system. Frank B. Good stuff. Uh, hey, Patel Philippe. Uh, what a thrill. Okay, good to see you. I heard you uh, got a brand new Patek Philippe with the other two guys on that other channel. And um, how about that? Okay, Tommy. El Capricho Ventresca di Bonito del Norte is the best canned tuna, tuna you can buy. Really? That sounds, that's in Spanish. Is that Spanish? Yeah. Or is it Italian? I don't know. Close enough. El Capricho, El Capricho Ventresca di Bonito del Norte. I'll look for that. Yeah, uh, I can talk about that for a moment uh, later on in the show, Patel. But um, I only have one comment on that, which is um, of no importance, obviously. But um, Thank you for that info, Tommy. Tommy knows uh, a lot about uh, the luxury world items to buy absolutely all right so now i'm going to bring up this next picture here and we're going to talk about tonino um uh what do you call it italian tuna wow okay this website is a t-o-n-n-i-n-o tonino.com and uh there it is it's all yellow fin tuna. You know, that brand from yesterday, uh, Az Domar, whatever it was called, uh, uh, that's all yellow fin tuna as well. All right. Well, get a load of this. I got too much. All right. So here it is a Tonino. Taste the difference in Tonino. Sounds Italian to me. I mean, I don't know. Premium tuna. This is not your grandma's tuna, but she'd probably like it too. There should be a comma there, but never mind. We'll move on. This is Pinky's Up tuna. What? Who the hell broke this shit? Top quality from head to tail. I think I know what that means, and it's really bad writing. Anyway, okay. So this is what we're talking about. The tuna. Tonino, caught in tropical waters, yellowfin is the most popular tuna in sushi bars. And here's their variety of tuna. Well, now let's scroll down the page because I looked at the jar in the supermarket and um, look at what I found. This ain't no Italian tuna. This is a product of Costa Rica. There it is, Tonino. Punta Arenas, Costa Rica. Now, you know, this is a whole issue in, in labeling and packaging of all kinds of foods, food products. Um, the word for tuna in Spanish is atun, if I'm correct, A-T-U-N, atun. But they're not using the Spanish word, okay? They're using... Uh, and the Italian word for tuna is tono, T-O-N-N-O. And again, don't correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you can correct me, but don't pick on me because I don't speak Italian. That's a tono, T-O-N-N-O. So tonino, I don't know what that means exactly, but it sounds Italian. But it ain't. It's from Costa Rica. So I read the jar, and yeah, it's uh, packaged, cooked, processed, the whole deal in Costa Rica. So let's look at one of these. Let's look at this one right here. Albacore, I mean, it looks good, right? Um, albacore tuna fillets, very good. And they say it tastes amazing. And it's got all the uh, safe, gluten-free, low mercury. I prefer high mercury, but I'll go with that. Chef inspired, I don't know what that means. Wild caught, 100% albacore kosher, all right? Ingredients, albacore olive oil, water, and sea salt. And here's all the nutrition bullshit and the recipes. And um, yeah, it's from Costa Rica. So, you know, it's, it's, is it purposely deceptive or misleading labeling? Yes. Okay. 
Um, everything is really in marketing. It's all bullshit. So I'm not going to blame this company for anything. But I have to, you know, hats off to that other company, Oz Domar. It's Italian from Italia, from Italy, and they showed the website was phenomenal. It's the real friggin' thing. Okay, this is, you know, it's you know. Anyway, so you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. It it ain't the Italian, but it sounds Italian. Now, let's click that off and go back to um, the other screen share. And let's see if I can find this. I got to take that off. There's too much direction going on here. Okay, hang in there. Cause, hang in because it gets worse. Ah, okay. Got it. Okay. So let's look at this thing here. So this is Costa Rica flag. Okay. My opinion is if it's going to have an Italian name, it should be from Italy. You know, we want the real thing. I do. I don't want an Italian name on something from Costa Rica. Now I hear people saying, oh, this guy crappy. He hates Costa Rican and everything Costa Rican. That's not the case at all. I have totally neutral opinion about anything Costa Rican, but, you know, they could have called it something different instead of Tonino. Because it sounds Italian. I don't know if it is Italian, but you see, it sounds Italian, and that's what the misleading thing is. So this is the Costa Rican flag, and uh, they also use this one. I don't know what the difference is, but uh, they're both the Costa Rican flag. So, I mean, what can I tell you? Um, is tuna from Costa Rica good? Maybe it's even, see, maybe it's even better than the, the tuna from Italy or from other countries. Maybe it's the best in the world. I don't know. But it's the, you know, now edamame, which is uh, soybeans in Japanese, this is a notoriously mislabeled product. When you go to your local supermarket, and usually it's in the frozen, well, it's in the frozen section. You see a big bag, like a one pound bag of frozen edamame. And it's really good. Okay. And the wrapping, I mean, the label, the printing, the packaging, it's all looking Japanese. All of it, every brand there, it all looks Japanese. It looks like it came straight from Japan because, you know, it's called edamame. But if you return it over and look at the back, every one of those says pro a product of China, PRC. Um, it's all deceptive. I don't want pea pods. Uh, I don't want uh, soybeans. I don't want any food items from China. I mean, maybe tea, you know, maybe a teapot. That would be okay, you know, unless the lacquer wear is using poisonous lacquer. I, I don't know. We're finishing. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, is that too much to ask? So if you look around for edamame or anything you think is Japanese, it's probably Chinese. So you got to read the packaging. you got to read the labels. And, you know, so I've talked about King Oscar sardines last night. Hey, they're supposed to be from Norway, but when you read the label, it's product of Latvia. I have nothing against Latvia. That Latvia sounds good to me, but they should just change. Oh, product of Poland. That's what it is, Poland. So... King Oscar's not from Poland. King Oscar's from Norway. Hey, no, hey, anyway. All right, let's go back to the comments here. Um, okay. Tommy knows shaved ice. Really? Well, okay. Guayu, Guayu Mars tuna is very good. I've never even heard of that brand. Okay. I don't know what that means. Okay. Patel, crappy, just go to the Skiji market at 5 a.m. and bid at one of those massive tunas fresh in Tokyo. Yeah, those things could sell for a million dollars. You know, you can get 10,000 cans of tuna from a tuna fish. Yeah. I've been there. I've been to Skiji market. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, the Decept Decepticon episode, right? Okay. You know what's interesting? I love carrots, but hate carrot soup. And I hate peas, but I love pea soup. A pea cleanse? That's very interesting. We could do a show about that. I like carrot, but uh, carrot soup? Nah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Crappy, do you know anything about the anthrax attacks or the Tylenol scare? Okay, well, what anthrax attacks and what or which Tylenol scare? Can you give us some details there? Uh, good evening, Spring. So, DiGiorno is not authentic Italian pizza? I don't know where DiGiorno pizza is from, you see, but it's the same idea, you know. Um, it's a good sounding name, DiGiorno pizza, but I don't know where it's made. Maybe it's made in uh, downtown Oklahoma City. I have no idea. If you want actual Italian tuna, you buy Capillo. Recommended by the best electrician this side of the Mississippi. Well, that's interesting. Capillo tuna. All right. Well, there's all kinds of brands. So, um, recommended by the best electrician this side of the Mississippi. Somehow I just lost interest in that brand but eh, if it's good it's good let's be fair okay if it's if it's really good it's really good so uh, i'll be on the lookout for it if i see it okay what's more polluted the caribbean or the mediterranean it's a very good question i have never thought about it and i don't think about things i don't think about you know so i don't know i don't know japan makes the best ice shavers well, that's good for people who want to know that. Flat four. Bonita del Norte tuna in olive oil. Bonita del Norte tuna in olive oil. Do you know what country that's from? Okay. Crappy. Is Folgers considered gourmet instant coffee? Folgers is the worst fucking vile shit. Um, if I were in a position of authority in the prison system, I would not even order Folgers coffee for the chain gangs. It's just... It's, just, it's not even suitable for chain gangs. It's, um, it's awful. Absolutely awful. Okay. Uh, Patel, perhaps you haven't seen my coffee shows. We've talked about that. Mike the Solipsist. By what year will the masses be, be eating soil and green as dictated by Schwab? Oh, coming soon, I'm sure. Uh, terrific film. The anthrax attacks in 2001, a few weeks after 9-11. And Tylenol bottles that got tampered with the 19 within the 1980s. Yeah, yeah, I remember all that. Um, that's a whole change of topic. I've got to focus on the tuna and then the cucumbers. But for a future show, we can talk about it. I don't remember the details on the anthrax thing. And uh, Tylenol company went into uh, um, Im massive image protection uh, reputation protection with the CEO. I remember that, but I have comments about that, actually. Okay. Flat four. Crappy. The best tuna is in the deep Atlantic. Many countries pack and process, but the Japanese prize deep water Atlantic over others. That's very interesting. Um, I know things about Japanese tuna. I can talk about that. I'll show you on a map. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I spent nearly $2,000 on a Hatsuyuki HZBE ice shaver. No more crunch. I refuse to crunch. $2,000 for a shaved ice gizmo? Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. Right. Okay. Um, flat for Spain. Oh, really? Okay, uh, that sounds good. Uh, the Tylenol, the Tylenol scare led to a big increase in the amount of packaging we have to claw our way through to get to the contents. You're absolutely right, Spring. Absolutely. Um, is it only for puck ice or all forms? You're not going to talk about curling, are you? So, okay. So, um, that wraps up the, uh, Tonino... Deceptive uh, naming of their tuna. You know, I mean, I'm all for Costa Rican tuna and Costa Rican anything, you know. 
A lot of Americans like to go there for retirement and live out uh, in very nice communities uh, in Costa Rica. But uh, come on, if it's from Costa Rica, you know, give it a Spanish name. Don't give it the Italian. Eh, whatever. All right, we're going to talk about cucumbers. All right, now I discovered something this last week or two about cucumbers. First off, I'll say I, I, I like cucumbers as much as the next guy. Uh, I rarely buy cucumbers. Why? Because I usually have frozen vegetables and of good quality, and they're really good. When I buy fresh produce, you know, it gets lost in the refrigerator. And then uh, two weeks, three weeks later, I see it in the back of the fridge under, under, you know, a box of something. And I go, what is that? I go, it's those fucking cucumbers, and they're all green, yellow, and moldy. And holy shit. You know, so I, I don't buy fresh veggies that much, you know. I bought two apples today, but um, I pushed, positioned those right in the very front of my fridge, so I'll get those uh, eaten pretty quickly. Now, a cucumber, a cucumber, you know, they all look the same. You can buy a cucumber, you can peel it, you don't have to peel it. Uh, you can eat it, you can uh, put it on a sandwich. Uh, there's all kinds, of, you can make cucumber this, whatever, you know. A cucumber salad is pretty good with some vinegar, however you make that, and well, anyway, I was over at Costco. Here's the cucumbers. You know, these are what they all look like. Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Okay. And I saw these things over at Costco. And I go, what in the fuck are these? And this the little sign said, English cucumbers. Actually, I saw these a long time ago, but I never bought them because I thought, what do you do with them? So I never bought them. That's English cucumbers. And here they all wrapped up. And uh, so I bought a pack. I bought a three pack of uh, Costco English cucumbers. That's regular cucumber, right? And here's the English cucumbers. And uh, yeah, here's another good picture. So I've never eaten an English cucumber. I've never done anything with an English cucumber. Why are there English cucumbers? Is there, does anyone know, is there a difference in taste or crunchiness or flavor or anything between the regular cucumber variety that we all know versus this English cucumber variety. Okay, because the fact is, um, I bought a package of three from Costco. Uh, and yeah, here, here they are. And I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with them. I have no idea what to do with it. So does anybody have any suggestions of what I can do with the English cucumbers I bought? Um, I know a lot of people are into uh, haute cuisine, so maybe there'll be some ideas for me. So I bought them. I got three of them in the fridge, but I don't know what to do with them. So um, let's go back here and catch up. Would you say luxury is dead? No, there's always going to be wealthy people, and wealthy people always buy you know, expensive stuff. And there's always going to be wannabe posers, and you know they'll use their credit card or take a HELOC loan and uh, buy the luxury stuff too. So, but um, but what about that guy? Um, uh, you know the rich guy in the Middle West. Um, you know the guy who lives in the old house from the forties. Uh, the big investor guy. What's his name? From Berkshire Hathaway. That guy. You know. Uh, he doesn't care about luxury products, you know, and he's a billionaire. So, yeah, whatever. Uh, I got the one that takes cubes and it turns it into snow, though blocked ice technically could be even finer. They're talking about shaved ice gadgets. Holy cow. Cucumbers are nasty when they go bad. Uh, yeah, probably. The, the worst thing that ever happened to me with food getting going bad in the fridge, I bought some brand of yogurt. It was some, you know, super organic, non-GMO, grass-fed, uh, you know, California dairy brand. And I thought, well, I'll try it. I forgot the name of the brand. And just your basic, you know, what are they, pint? Like a quart container. And again, it got lost in the fridge. I had uh, maybe one serving of the quart container. and It just got shuffled towards the back, and I've, all those Taco Bell wrappers and bags just covered it all up, and I forgot all about it. And then I found it, and I go, holy shit, when did I buy this? So it was about half a container. 
and I opened the lid, and the inside was a bright, glowing green, and all kinds of like ridges and shapes and stalagmite, stalactite kind of shapes. So I closed it in a, in a fraction of a second. I went, holy fuck. So I got a uh, plastic garbage bag, one of those 30-gallon lawn bags, and I threw it in there. Then I immediately you know, sealed it up and threw it in the dumpster outside. And uh, holy fuck. So that was um, pretty nasty. Cucumbers are great for gin cocktails. Really? Okay, well, I, I, all right. Cucumbers are for the plebs. Zucchini is for the true enthusiast. Now, what is the relationship, uh, botanically speaking, between cucumbers and zucchini? They kind of look a little similar. They're long, similar girth, similar length. We're talking cucumbers. Um, green. So I, I don't know, but the squash is a cucumber or squash family. I don't think so. So it's just a similarity of some sort. Now, today I also bought two organic yellow squash. I like those, but um, okay. Um, man, this machine is what people take the parks to snort a snow cone business. HELOC are a great way to finance ice shavers. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. English cucumbers, oh, here we go, somebody who knows this. English cucumbers have thinner skin and few, if any, seeds. They tend to be sweeter than regular cukes. Now, you see, that is very good information. I've had them in my fridge for about three days, so they're still very fresh or fresh enough. And so tomorrow, now that I know something about them, Spring, I'm going to, uh, I'll have one for lunch tomorrow. And uh, I like cucumbers peeled and not peeled. So I'll just wash it off and uh, I, you can easily get two hand grip on it, if you know what I mean, and to wash that thing rub it back and forth and wash it and and uh, I'll slice it up and then just you know include it in a salad a big salad and um, I don't know what you mean crappy Dairy Queen is as elite as it comes what are you talking about you lost me Tom uh, I watched the boats in the AM going to Logan with fish about all the East Coast tuna is overnighted right to Tokyo. U.S. won't pay the high dollars. There's um, two fishing ports, cities, in Japan. One is in Aomori Prefecture, and I'd have to look at the map to remember it. And the other one is called um, Kesuma, I think. I don't remember. And they, uh, especially the one in, in the uh, Aomori Prefecture, they, those fishing boats don't go in the regular tuna fishing grounds. They go way, 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 you know, like, you know, where the ocean ends and they fall off the planet. They go way out there to find this tuna that other boats don't really go to that part of the ocean. And that tuna is very expensive. And that tuna is used at the premier sushi places in Japan and um, um, I have to look on a map again to remember the name of that town but um, you are correct um, so you're saying the boats uh, on the east coast of what of America what is Logan I say you lost me there uh, yeah Tommy does what well, okay my wife said, my, uh, yeah, okay, $10, right. English cucumber, right, exactly. Cucumbers are fruit, zucchini are vegetables. Well, now, how about that? See, that's very good information. Okay. Zucchini are great, sautéed in olive oil with peppers and mushrooms. Oh, zucchini are fantastic. I like um, zucchini. I like squash of all varieties. Did anybody ever go buy from the grocery store or produce market uh, uh, delicato squash <clears throat> it's a yellow cucumber kind of shape but larger and it's got uh, striped colors on like red yellow green whatever and uh, you got to cook it in the oven or 
I forgot, but oh man, it, it is extraordinarily good. Delicato, D-E-L-I-C-A-T-O. You got to look for it. It's incredible. Um, Spring puts cucumbers in his fruit salad. What a wacko. Avocado is a fruit too. You know? Okay. Uh, oh, he's the wacko. Okay, got it. Yeah, there's also Persian or cucumbers. There's all kind. So I was doing some reading. There's all kinds of cucumbers. I didn't know any of this. There's like eight varieties of more than there's a dozen. There's all kinds of cucumbers. Some of them look really funky. Uh, tomatoes are also fruit. Tomatoes and cucumbers go well together. Yeah, absolutely right. They go fantastic. Yeah. So, um, any suggestions of what I can do with these uh, English cucumbers? Um, all I can think of to do is just, you know, wash them up and uh, maybe slice them and uh, put them on a salad. Uh, does anybody have any creative suggestion or of what I can do with the, to, to, to enjoy the English cucumber experience besides just slicing up and putting it on a salad? I mean, you don't really cook cucumbers. They don't really cook well. Well, you can't cook them at all, really, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Boston. Oh, you mean, uh, oh, Logan Airport. Is that what you mean? Boston? Okay. Right. Uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, and avocados with a little Italian dressing. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't buy avocados. Um, but uh, I like guacamole, but I've never bought maybe once ever avocados. Um, I'm not an avocado kind of guy. Though uh, I do like it, but uh, I don't know really how you select one and they go fast. They go bad very quickly in the fridge, you know, so. Well, okay. So, um, that's the English cucumber topic. I will, uh, experiment with the English cucumbers and, uh, see what I come up with. I'm sure it'll be, uh, interesting, maybe worthwhile. And, um, yeah. Okay. So now what we can do is. Hendrix gin with tonic and float a slice of cucumber on top. I've never had Hendrix gin. Okay. Hendrix gin with tonic and float a slice of cucumber. Now, what do you do with the cucumber? Do you eat it during while you're drinking it? Or is it just for decoration? Or oh, Here's a very interesting question. Crappy, what's softer, mink or chinchilla? Well, I'm not a furrier, but uh, my first thought, just thinking about my experience with both, is I want to say chinchilla, but uh, I don't know. It could be both the same or one over the other. I, I don't know. But I have a show coming up very soon about weasels, and weasels are related to minks. So, um, yeah, the weasel show is coming up very soon. Probably within the week. Um, eat the cucumber after it soaks up some of the gin. Ah, that's a very good idea. You know, uh, slice up the cucumber and just pour in some quality uh, Italian dressing or olive and vinegar. Olive oil and vinegar and just let it sit in the fridge and kind of marinate. And um, that would be very, very good. Yeah, I, I like it both ways, Forbin. Um, I don't know if we could sell weasel for successfully. Well, I don't know. I'm not a weasel expert. I mean, the animal weasels, you know, or minks, but, um, I don't know much about weasel fur. I mean, I don't know if that's a marketable fur for, you know, fashionable people, but, um, you know, it's kind of like a squirrel fur coat or a raccoon it's, it's lower on the list of desirable, elegant furs, I would imagine. Uh, I can only think of a couple Bavarians who'd want that. I see. Oh, Barbarians. Oh, a little difference there. Let's get the invite link up there. And uh, I have no more to talk about 
about anything. So it's up to whoever comes on if they want to introduce a new topic or just talk about uh, the same topics. And I'm getting really tired, so I don't know how long we'll hang on. But um, and of course, anybody can come on and talk about whatever they want. And as I always say, you know, when I say anybody, that means well, you know, most anybody. Oh, the audio is bad again. Hold on, I'm going to unplug the mic. Is the audio okay? Anybody? Audio. We have our first guest. Hey, crappy. Good evening. All right, let me remove uh, the cucumbers off to the side to get you up there. Well, you be creative on this. Hold on. Um, you just made your bike mess up and come back again. Are you? Yeah, maybe I moved it. That was it. Um, Vicuna, Vicuna is great. Yeah, that's uh, very expensive, like camel hair on a coat. Yeah. Okay. Um, very good. How's it going? When that, when that Decepticon comment <clears throat> happened, it was when your mic went out first. So. Uh, yeah, I got to buy a new mic. The Mookie or some of those guys recommended. Uh, I mean, the guys in the panel, they recommended a really good quality microphone. I wrote, I, uh, so I just haven't done it yet, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I got the show because I look at those English cucumbers and because they look kind of strange, I, I never got them, but now I think yeah. I will. Yeah, I've seen them here and there, but I never bought them because I didn't know, well, what do you do with them? And why why are they different? How are they different? And But everybody's selling them now, you know, so... It's like that thing, uh, dragon fruit, which is very, oh, God, used to be almost, you would never see it. Now it's in every Kroger and Safeway, you know. So, yeah, I, you know, I normally don't eat the skin of the cucumber. I usually peel that off because it's kind of bitter, but I guess it's okay to eat. And I guess this oh, yeah. skin would be less bitter, so it might actually add a little bit of flavor. With that well, uh, I like extra crunch, you know, sometimes, so... Um, my false teeth can handle the extra crunchiness and chewing, so no problem. So I'm going to crack open that. I bought a three-pack at Costco, and they still look very good, ready to eat. So I'll uh, I'll do that tomorrow. And um, no, when I was uh, cooking, I I would it would take me like three days to get through a cucumber. I like about a third of it. I could chop up into a salad and eat it. And by the if I didn't eat the eat it three days in a row, but the time it got to the fourth or fifth day, it started getting squishy. Yeah, right. It's so good. So, okay. Tommy, is this the guy who was talking leather jackets on the panel? Well, I don't know. I mean, I did a show, I did an entire show with Herman Ingram about leather jackets. Maybe you're thinking of that. Okay. No, no. I, I had brought up that I, I apologize for, it was you, me, and, and Shot in the Dark. And Shot had a lot of really good information because he had owned several leather jackets in his life. Oh. I had only I had only owned one, and I, I you know, and I just had worn it. I didn't go look into it and find out you know whether it was a good one or not, and uh -huh. you know, all this other stuff. But uh, I just like it was one of these English motorcycle type jackets where the where it, it goes over itself, sort of like a double breasted uh, uh, jacket. And uh, but I had no real contribution to the to the right. show. Yeah, but at least I apologize for it. Cool. Okay. But uh, this this is I mean some of this stuff I do know, so I'll I'll comment on some. So you're I more do. into the cucumbers and avocados than the English leather jackets. That, that well, yeah, I like to cook. I like to cook. So. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, it says you should mention real McCoys, Himmel Brothers, and Lost Worlds. What are those leather jackets? I don't know. It could be uh, brands. Check out McCoy's is good. Check out Ironheart. I don't know what that is. Is this all leather products? I don't know what they're talking about. You know, I had a friend in the in the eighties. There were these really stylish, almost like business like leather jackets mm -hmm. that were thin, and and they're just and they were just really nice. They were just kind of a nice thing to have. It wasn't it wasn't trying to be you know super you know like I, I'm a motorcyclist or I'm a cowboy or whatever. It's just a nice. But I haven't seen them. I looked and looked and looked after that show, and I guess they're not fashionable this these days. So nobody makes that style of uh, leather coat anymore. You know who uh, looked great 
you know, leather, full length, I mean, full length leather coats. Back when? I'm not even going to say who. Okay. All right. But they, they knew how to make those leather coats, I'll tell you. Uh, Foreman, shot in the dark, had Wilson's house of suede and leather. Classic TV commercial on YouTube. Well, that was from way back. There was a store, Wilson's House of Suede, in Beverly Hills, right at the corner of, uh, at the intersection of Wilshire and Santa Monica Boulevard. I remember those commercials, and yeah. It was there for a long, long time, decades. And I remember those commercials. That's like from the 80s, probably. 70s? I don't know. Maybe in the 70s, yeah. I remember yeah. seeing them, like, during, uh, what was that? It was it, uh, Scott, I can't remember his name. There was this guy that used to do the horror uh, shows. Well, I don't know. Anyway, um, anyway, they would have those during the commercial breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, Eastman Leather makes the jackets you're talking about, Crappy, the ones we won't talk about. Uh, well, what I'm referring to is when you watch old documentaries, I mean, actual you know, footage of World War II, and you, know, you see images of Rommel and you know, all those guys with these leather, full-length leather coats. I mean, talk about Fuck, yeah, you... fucking good-looking coats, you know, and Albert Speer and all those guys wore those things, standard issue, you know. And, uh, man, those fucking good-looking coats, i got to say it, you know. It's a lot different than, than, the, than the executive trench coat made by Morty, but um, anyway. Oh, yeah, those are always kind of sloppy-looking. Yeah, right. Well, anyway. You know, Rommel would wear those this, scenes in the movie Rommel with James Mason, one of my favorite films. He's in the desert, uh, and he's wearing the full-length leather, you know, overcoat. And I guess in the desert, sometimes it gets, in like Tunisia, it must get really cold. Yeah, because, I mean, because yeah. in Patton, there's a line in Patton when George Scott is in Tunisia, and he, and he says to one of the guys, he says, uh, it's, he's, uh, it's something like, um, I'm always surprised how cold it gets here in the desert at night. So I guess it does get cold. Anyway. I used to go out to the Mojave a lot, and I guess you can go east and get to like where Bend is or something, and uh, you get really hot in the summer and really cold in the winter. Yeah, right, right. Uh, only sketch dudes on trains wear full-length leathers. What's a sketch dude? Or sketchy, people that are sketchy. Sketchy? Really? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really see that here. But, it's um, interesting. Um, if I were to get on the uh, metro for some reason in L.A., mm -hmm. I would wear a full-length leather coat so that people wouldn't mess with me or there'd be a slightly less chance they'd mess with me. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I okay. I used to have a really ugly old coat, but I, could, it, I threw it away because it was just so ugly and old. But I think I might go to a, a second-hand store and pick one up if I ever have to need to go on a... Cause I just don't want people messing with me because they're just people that will mess with you. Isn't uh, in that movie Matrix, didn't that guy wear one of those full-length leather coats? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, who was it? Um, Neo and uh, it was... Uh, and the other guy. Uh, uh, Morpheus. Larry Fishburne. Uh, uh, yeah, Morpheus. He is Morpheus. Yeah, I saw some interview with him when the, report, the interviewer called him Larry Fishburne, which is how he was billed, like in Apocalypse Now and when he was young. And he called him Larry, and he said, it's Lawrence Fishburne. Yes. Larry was a teenager. Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah. Only his friends call him Larry, right? Yeah, right. Like Lawrence Olivier. Right? Anyway, I just moved the mic. I hope it doesn't fuck up again. All right. So um, you can buy a World War I German flying coat for 1600 Yeah, you can buy all those uh, stuff, all that stuff. But um, But anyway. It's what the Red Baron wore. All right. Very good. Let's get off of that World War II uh, German. Is that going back to the tuna real quick, uh, I, yeah, I looked up that. We, the one I used to get, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I would make it for my mom. She liked to have tuna sandwiches, and and um, I got her the Genova stuff because it had the olive oil in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and then I, I just... I just looked it up because, you know, you said real Italians. I said, well, maybe this isn't real Italian. Well, Turns it sounds out, Italian. So it's Genova. Yeah. Well, it was really Italian. It was, you know, canned in, in Italy, so they probably fished it in the Mediterranean. Right. Then it got bought up by Chicken of the Sea, and yeah. they, moved it, they moved it to maybe San Diego or something. So like canning. Oh, well, I'm going to look. Next time I'm at the supermarket, I'll look at a can of uh, uh, Genoa. Is it it's Genoa, not Genova? I don't no, know. No, it's Genova, but Genova, Genova. is uh, the Italian way of saying Genoa or something. Okay. 
person. Yeah. Uh, if it's uh, course, from San Diego, that means it's mass produced by the Chicken of the Sea Company. And in that case, forget it. Well, the worst thing is, is that the Chicken of the Sea Company is owned by some Thai conglomerate, which means they might actually get the fish from, from Vietnam or something, which is even yeah. worse. Yeah, well, now you see uh, Thailand is one of the world's biggest countries for, uh, uh, canned, uh, for tuna and fish products, cat food, dog food, all fish products. And I buy lots of uh, tuna fish. It says product of Thailand. And there's no problem with that. Okay, it's very... Uh, state-of-the-art okay. uh, factories there but um yeah where is that tuna being caught is it being caught in uh, downtown uh, shanghai or you know where so it's like tilapia you know michael savage said uh, one time i was listening to him he said tilapia said, don't ever buy tilapia it's total garbage fish you know and uh, it's mainly from china it's just garbage fish so when i was at this super upscale luxury uh supermarket grocery store today they had some frozen tilapia, you know, really expensive. I looked at the wrapper and it said, yeah, product of China. So I said, funk this, you know. So well, I don't ever buy tilapia. Even worse, you know where another place has tilapia is uh, the Salton Sea, which oh, really? is a real na nasty place. And I think for a while there, they were actually getting some tilapia out of the Salton Sea. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. That's like that's like the river sticks i mean that's like the that if you want to go if you want to find hell get 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 a boat on onto the salton sea and float down it and see yeah, it I, um making you know catching catfish in lake texoma or lake dallas or somewhere like that sound a little better you know oh, God. or you know lake uh whatever but um yeah you know. well you know they just found out recently that uh, the medical industry, all the hospitals and stuff, had been dumping all the radioactive waste into the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California. Mm -hmm. and, and then all that stuff is still emitting that radiation. So all the fish that we've been eating that was, you know, fished off of South, you know, off of Los Angeles or, mm -hmm. or Orange County is... Uh, Got a little bit extra zip to it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, all this mercury and radiation, and I really don't care about it anymore because uh, it's not going to matter. So you might as well just live it up, and you know, because we're at the end of society, end of the world. So it's just a matter of days, weeks. Yeah. yeah, I was reading this report that they were trying to claim that coal killed like five hundred thousand people, and it, to me, it's like, well, coal kept millions of people warm in the winter and cool in the summer mm. and and there's a lot of people that die because of heat waves when they can't afford their electric bill or, or freeze to death when they can't afford their 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 gas bill and the heating bill so um you know you gotta you gotta balance things out there yeah what about uh cigarettes you know how many hundreds of thousands of americans die every year from cigarettes but uh, Joe Biden wants to ban uh, rifles and firearms because uh, cigarettes aren't in the Bill of Rights, you know, but that's a whole different topic. Uh, Herman Love is here. He says, what happened to Ross on today's stream? I don't know. I, I didn't see it. I, I don't watch the Archie channel much at all. That's and, a new guy. I've never heard of Ross. Who's Ross? Oh, Ross Rachel Brady. You not familiar with him? No. Oh, I don't know whether I should tell you about him or not. Ross is a regular uh, featured panelist on uh, Horology Dungeon and Archie Luxury. He's from Arkansas. Okay. And that's, um, that's right. maybe other people can tell you about him. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. But I don't know, Herman. I, I, didn't, I don't watch the show much, so I don't know. Does anybody have information on Ross Rachel Brady today? Okay. For a great little documentary narrated by John Waters titled Plagues and Pleasures on the Salton Sea. Is that oh, That sounds good. Know? That sounds good. Yeah, because John, you did all the crazy, like, what, pink flamingos? Yeah, right. He's a real, like that. weird guy. Yeah. I've seen a, real, a real movie he made? Real I've, seen, uh, I've seen a number of documentaries, and there's also the movie called, I think it's called Salton Sea, that has, uh, oh, uh, what's his name? Val Kilmer in it. And it's about a bunch of meth heads that live down by the salt and sea. And that was a good movie, um, kind of depressing. But uh, there's a lot of funky people that live by the salt and sea. I wouldn't go there. I mean, I've driven by, I've driven through there, but I wouldn't stop because it's, you know, a lot of people on the edge, right? So some of them are just real friendly and they just want to get away from society and they're just, you know, want to be friendly and all that. But other ones are, are there because they can't deal with other people. And if you say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, you're in trouble. 
Mm-hmm. Well, well, how about that? Yeah. Um, let's see here. That movie, that that's a real movie. You're saying real documentary. It's on uh, YouTube or PBS. All right. Um, I don't know. John Walter, John Waters. I did see Pink Flamingos and one of his other films. And, um, that was like what in the seventies. Um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Right. With uh, what was that guy's name? Divine. Who uh, ate the dog shit in the movie or something? Yeah, when I heard that, I, I just said I was never going to watch that movie. I think I, I watched the movie about him, about his. Uh, there was a movie about John Waters. It was a, it was sort of like, uh, there was a movie about the guy who did Plan Nine from Outer Space. Ed Wood, yeah. Yeah, and that was a funny movie. And I've actually, I I, a very good film. Yeah. And I saw Plan Nine. I actually went and saw. Then after that, I saw Plan Nine from Outer Space. <laughs> That was a bad yeah, movie. But it was a double feature. <laughs> yeah, the story back then was in the movie Pink Flamingos, this guy, uh, Divine. And I saw the movie. I don't remember it, though. It's what, 70s? Yeah. He uh, he was walking around behind a dog, and the dog pooped on the sidewalk, and he picked up the shit and ate it. And then it was all, it was all did he really eat dog shit, or was it just, you know, you know fake? But I don't remember the, uh, the details on that. Um, Herman's on the Van Wick Expressway in New York. How about that? Oh wow! So he's visiting his old, his his, uh, his old stomping grounds. Well, I think he only was there for a year. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but he was in music school and all that, so it must have been right, very yeah, that's right. very memorable time. So yeah, he said have... that was his best year of his life was in the year in New York. So. Yeah, all right, and uh, something's a cesspool. What's he talking about? Well, it's now a cesspool. I'd be probably saying it's now a cesspool because oh, all the maybe, yeah, right. the stuff that went on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, the link is posted, folks. If anybody else would like to join the panel, um, let me get that up there. And again, when I say anybody, I mean well, you know, most anybody. Yeah. And um, so, is that your usual brand of tuna, uh, Genova? So I, I'm not a big fan of canned tuna, um, uh -huh. but uh, I would when I make it. For other people, I would have the tuna, plus uh, a, a, a similar can, those the small cans of green chilies, diced green chilies. Yeah, right. You got to squish, squish all the water out of the chilies. You squish all the oil out of the tuna, and then you mix it with a little bit of mayonnaise to get it to stick together, and that makes a pretty decent um, tuna sandwich. You just spread that on whatever your favorite bread is, and that makes a good tuna sandwich. Really, I've never bought those uh, little green chili things. I don't like. Uh, they oh, don't those have, are, those are not, not spicy, are they? Or? Oh, no, they're not spicy at all. They just add a little bit. Of, they're more sweet than anything else. Okay, maybe I know what those are. Yeah. And okay. uh, yeah. the other thing, I think I've shared this before, is the tuna patties are really good, where you take uh, oh yeah yeah you take uh, mashed potatoes, essentially, stiff mashed potatoes, and you mix them with tuna. Uh, I do chopped onions and an egg, a raw egg, and you, you make them into patties, and um and you fry them up yeah even better than that is salmon patties and uh th those are really great yeah but folks, I've, seen, I've seen where people actually put a coating like a flour or something on the outside and they basically fry them up yeah i right. never, we never did that we just we just hmm. and it, it was harder to just try to fry up the potatoes by themselves because potatoes got so much water in them that mm -hmm. they boil for a long time before they finally start crisping up but yeah right uh crampy you ever into lionel trains yeah when i was a kid i had train set um it was a lot of fun it was terrific i don't remember what year i, st I lost i stopped doing all that but maybe uh early teenager i probably stopped that I, or maybe 10 or 11 I, I don't remember when but yeah that was really i also had one of those uh, race car sets back then it was a real popular toy for kids so, so Krabby, when you were in the Los Angeles area, did you ever go to Travel Town? Oh, yeah, that's the train thing by Griffith Park. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that's by the zoo and the forest lawn. and yeah. I think I was there. I don't remember. Um, I might have been there once, but um, yeah, okay. Um, wow, all right. Uh, I saw a movie today. I was in a very strange mood earlier, so... I was looking around YouTube for some movie to watch, and I picked a movie which it's inexplicable why I picked it, but I watched a movie called Jack Reacher from 2012 starring 
Tom Cruise. I like and that movie. I, I'm going to do a full review on that movie in a separate video. But okay. um, ha, 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 ha. people hated it because the 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 the, the purists who what, read the book, it's clear that Reacher is a very tall guy, and Tom Cruise is a very short guy. Yeah, well, there's a TV show on some HBO or some channel uh, on Jack Reacher. It's been on for several seasons, and the guy is really big. Who plays? Yeah, that. the people who are the purists love that TV show because they say finally they got Reacher right. Yeah, you see, but Tom Cruise, I, I'll save all this on the other show, but he portrays these characters that have nothing to do with who he really is, and he can't pull them off. It's like, you know, he played uh, Colonel Von... Um, the guy in the Nazi... Um, okay, he's trying to kill Killer, right? Uh, I'm sorry, I just forgot his name. But that guy was like six foot four, you know, and a real war hero, and, and a noble British, a German, fa no, a German nobility uh, ancestry, and Tom Cruise is ridiculous. And in that movie where he's in Japan with the samurai, and he's portraying this Civil War uh, hero soldier, it's like just a joke, you know? And in this movie, he... Uh, he, he doesn't fit the character at all. You know, he's not impressive uh, physically or uh, he has no powerful aura or no one would fear him, you know, but the guy in the TV version definitely fits the character. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, the thing about it is a lot of times they have to put famous people in to get the funding, right? They don't get the funding for the film unless they say, okay, we, we want our... Well, Tom know. Cruise, you know, he, he, he produced it and he, he he just makes whatever he wants and that's fine, you know, but... Uh, it is, he can the buy the he, right. The way he views who he is is just... Uh, his ego is just massive. Then again, you know, he's built one hell of a career, you know, monetary, you know, uh, decades long-wise, that is not, you know, not quality, but content i mean uh a number uh what am i saying quantity wise and he's still a big star so what can i say he's uh there's rumors that he's second in command of his church so yeah that's the big that's the big story that he's number two after um uh david miscavige in scientology yeah um hello blondie okay I just learned of a documentary called A Century of Lionel Electric Trains that's on YouTube and is narr narrated by Tom Snyder, who was a big... Oh, my fan. God. Yeah, he talked about that on, on his uh, Tom Snyder Tomorrow show. He was really into trains. i got to watch that. And I'll like look for that. That's, uh, that's really good information for him, and I'll take a look at that. No, this is Spring in Fialta, uh, uh, Blondie, not Patrick. I'm not... I'm not trying to get in touch with my AD <laughs> to That's get right. my Rolex. Right. But I, I, I understand I can actually go in and get something now. So I'm gonna, I might look, I might start looking. Right, right, right. No, it's not Holden. No. Yeah, Spring and Fialta is a uh, guy in Southern California. That's all we can say. And he's, uh, he doesn't know who Ross Rachel Brady is, Blondie. Uh, he just. So uh, Herman just said, what happened to Ross today on the Archie show? But I don't know. But uh, um, anyway. I don't qualify for the uh, the Archie show. The most expensive watch I have has an MSRP of $2,500. Well, that's which I got, nice. Yeah. I got it for 800 So, I mean, I, I, I would qualify in terms of getting a deal, but that's about it. Well, what watch is that? It's an Alpina. Um, Alpina, yeah, right. Mono, pull, uh, mono pusher uh chronograph uh-huh yeah so, um what's his name uh higgins knows all about alpina he was talking about that on some channel oh okay and um yeah all right um tommy rl uh l ron it's l ron hubbard is on the panel no, no. i watch a lot of uh Scientology related uh, videos, documentaries, uh, interviews with the people who've escaped or, you know, and um, it's really uh, just and Tom Cruise's connection with all that and the leadership and the Clearwater, Florida thing and the Hollywood Center. And oh, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. <clears throat> Reacher has been free on Amazon. He had a muscular football player body last year but bulked up even more to become a massive monster of a man 
George might say he's one big son of a bitch. Right. Okay. Got it, Foreman. All right. So, um, yeah, I did watch a few of those episodes on, it's on Amazon, like uh, he just mentioned, or one of those where you can watch it for free. And I watched like the first three or four episodes. And yeah, I mean, it, it was better than watching the Jack Reacher movie with Tom Cruise. I will say that, but uh was it better than, uh, it's even better than watching Walker, Texas Ranger, but it's still just a stupid TV show. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the lady from the King, yeah, what's her name? Um, uh, Ramini, uh, Remini, um, I forgot her name. Yeah, she, she got out of that and she, she talks all about it. Leah Remini. Yeah. I never watched that show, The King of Queens, whatever it's called. Oh God, it's horrible. I, I watched it. They're so mean to each other. And I thought I would like it because uh, the guy who plays George's father, um, uh, Stiller, Jerry uh, Stiller, yeah, yeah he's hilarious on on, uh -huh. um, but he's horrible on King of Queens. He's a miserable skinflint who only cares about himself and uh, in really kind of a mean way. It's just a, uh, it's really a horrible uh, show. I don't know why it lasted so long. Tommy's making fun of you. Oh, they're so mean. Yeah, I know. I mean, I just, uh, yeah. it's supposed to be a comedy, right? I mean, it's okay for them to poke fun at each other, but they're, they're basically, they do things. Well, the that, Roseanne show was vicious, mean humor. And I never found that funny at all. It was pretty yes, just yeah. it was garbage crap uh, <clears throat> TV. Um, uh, I don't find her funny at all. She's really a unpleasant. I woman. mean, but yeah, um, watch, yeah. Seinfeld. Sopranos is mean. Is, Comedy. Yeah, exactly. No, it's Sopranos is mean, but that makes sense, right? They kill each other. Sense. Yeah, Honeymooners uh, is mean. Uh, Ralph Crampton is mean to his wife, but at the end they kiss and make up and, you know, and all that. But Andy Griffith Show and Dick Van Dyke and uh, uh, Frazier, these, these are cheers. They're not mean. Yeah. Well, I, it, Tommy asked me, how do I feel about Modern Family? I refuse to watch that show. It's too politically watch. correct. Yeah. Um, I never watched King of Queens, whatever it's called, because I looked at it one time and I saw the guy who plays the lead, the, the fat guy who's married to yeah, Leah yeah. Remini. And I go, who the fuck is this guy? My mailman's a better actor than this guy. So I never watched it. I gave it like 10 seconds. So that, that's uh, I mean, the reason for that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's right now, if there's a TV show I could follow for you know, I, I used to like Jeopardy, but now that's been all screwed up because they have creepy people. It's a circus act every time I watch it. Oh, and, yeah. Jeopardy is that? Well, Alex Trebek is gone. Is there a new host? Well, the, the, I like the host. It's Ken Jennings. He was the guy who who was the first guy to like go like seventy episodes or whatever. He made over a million dollars, and he's a, a likable guy. Well, and he, he was a, he was a player. Yeah, he was a player. He was like the the biggest. He was the most famous Jeopardy player for a long time. And he's the host now. He is a host now, and uh, I, I think no he. Yeah. But uh, they have uh, every. They've got at least at least one person has to have blue or green hair every episode, and then you got all um, different kinds of people that are. You know, yeah. Uh, I used to watch Jeopardy a lot when it was the original show with Art Fleming, and I don't remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure that I went to a taping of the show in New York, in NBC Rockefeller Center, where they taped uh, Jeopardy, and. Um, I'm pretty sure I went there with a couple of friends and we watched an episode cool. of that. And uh, they, they tape them like five in a day or something like that uh, because there's nothing to change. You know, they just each show is the same. It's all rote the way they go through it. And um, so they do five in a day, all those game shows, most of them. And um, they build up a good inventory and then they, they just halt production and everyone takes a break and where the hosts can do other bullshit and whatever, you know. And I'm pretty sure I went to a show, uh, a video, a taping of that. Yeah, but I used to watch that all the time. Yeah, yeah that's one I of actually, my biggest. Yeah. one of my biggest regrets is not going to at least one taping in in California. I actually went with a few friends of mine to the Jeopardy uh, um, a contestant sign up to try and get on the show. You know, and you know, all of us were pretty fucking smart and. Um, they filmed it at, they did the audition or interviews at KTLA on Sunset. KTLA. Oh, wow. Okay. I know where that is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they do a lot of videos, a lot of shooting from other shows on that same lot. And uh, we tried it three times, like a year apart, and none of us got picked. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Well, I believe it, but I couldn't believe it. 
Well, the, the two times I, I just happened to be um, in some type of a, a, a group outing at a hotel yeah. and the, uh, the Jeopardy bus happened to be there that time. So in both cases, they gave you like a, a piece of paper with like 10 questions on it. Mm -hmm. And I answered it. And then um, I was with a girlfriend and she also filled it out hers and um i got picked and she didn't so obviously you had to answer i don't know nine out of ten or something like that well they so also, then they, yeah go ahead so then they the next step is they bring us all the people that passed that first test got in this huge this this room it's sort of like half the size of a basketball uh a high school basketball mm -hmm. arena and there was like a basically uh stands on one side and we, you sat in the stands and then there was a tv screen and you basically had a bunch of questions that come by and you had to pretty much answer them as they went because there was no way for you to remember and go back and figure it out well, i don't remember they did it differently at when i auditioned not auditioned interviewed you know or applied and um i don't remember what they did they gave us a written test or and then they talked to us they one of the you know associate assistants uh you know, talk to everybody and then combining, I guess, the likability or personality compared with how they did on the written test. And they put that all together in a formula of who they like, who they pick. But uh, So I never, I never got to the third because they said whoever passed that second test, then they would get to go in a smaller room and then they would do like what you're saying. They'd get you, they'd interview you and see if you were, you know, TV worthy, I guess. Right. Yeah, or right. Something. Exactly. Yeah. So I never got to that third step, but I did. There was a couple of uh, people in line, a man and a woman that were dressed to the, the, the hilt in suits and everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I lost track of them at that particular event, but later I saw both of them on TV. So they actually, so they must've made it. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I want to, I want to get back to this comment from uh, Tommy. Uh, TV sitcoms that would be described as mean or a vicious kind of comedy is not funny. And uh, two shows that come to mind on that are Roseanne and Married with Children, okay? And both of those are full of insults and uh, attacking and uh, that kind of humor. And yeah, they were hit songs, but that just reflects the depravity of our country now and the people watching TV. But the great shows uh, are nothing like that. And if you rank the, the 20 or 50 best sitcoms, which you wouldn't possibly get 50 best sitcoms, but, you know, the ones that have that mean, vicious, uh, snipey kind of humor, they're just uh, a minuscule percentage. Um, it's like the greatest comedians don't use foul language. And I've discussed this with a lot of people and they all told me they'll fuck off. But it's absolutely true. Uh, Johnny Carson, Seinfeld, um, uh, you, you name who you want, Jack Benny, you can go back then or even currently. The ones who are the most famous and the most successful don't use vile fucking humor and, uh, you know, F-bombs all day long in the routine. Now, there are people like that who have a career, but they're not funny. There's and, like, there's... Uh, and, they're, and they're still at a lower level of success than, than the great comedians. Now, Red Fox had a whole career of being the most foul mouth, vile, you know, sex uh, 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 material uh, comedy in, in nightclub circuit. But when he got um, in uh, Sanford and Son, his whole career changed because that was a clean, funny show. And that's when he became a giant star. The years of struggling, you know, in these little crappy comedy clubs around the country doing his, you know, vile X-rated act didn't make him famous. Anyway, well, the same thing was true of Buddy Hackett, I believe he was. Yeah, well, Buddy Hackett would um, uh, he was very, very famous and popular. But uh, later on, he did become a, a very foul mouthed comedian in his Las Vegas act. Yeah. So uh, Tommy's saying that we don't like uh, Bill Hicks or jo I like Bill Hicks and George Carlin, but I don't remember them being particularly foul mouthed. No, no, um, George Carlin was no, no, he was not. He was a very intelligent comedian and he was not a every other word is F this, F that and you know, dick jokes and the pussy jokes and No, he wasn't that at all. He had very topical uh, intelligent material. George and the Carlin other guy, Bill Hicks, I never heard him. I don't know. He did a lot of politics, but he did it in a funny way. Uh, and then uh, George Carlin played with the language a lot, which was really you know Yeah, really right. But he didn't come on and do a ten minute routine about uh, dicks and vaginas you know 
I mean, you had the seven dirty words you weren't supposed to say on radio. That's, that's, he had, that's, that's different material. That's yeah. yeah, but he, you know, that wasn't his only shtick. You know. So. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, Roseanne, uh, she's a pretty awful person, in my opinion. Just my opinion. You know, singing the national anthem and grabbing your crotch and spitting, you know, on the ground when you do that and all that shit she does. Uh, she's no talent. It's my opinion. Well, you know, she has talent for being. Uh, untalented so. yeah we had the seven dirty words i know but that was he went through them real quick he would say them really really fast yeah the material wouldn't... yeah the routine wasn't saying the word 50 times in, in an hour you know it was talking about it in a political cultural sense he didn't just come on and talk about it. i went to the urologist today and got a penis surgery and 20 minutes on that and my wife just got a vaginal rejuvenation procedure you know and uh, talk about her labia and all this shit half an hour and say fuck every 10 seconds and that's the routine which is pretty much the way it goes now if bill hicks if bill hicks uh you know cussed every once in a while his his material wasn't about the cussing and it was so funny that the cussing was just you know his way of talking it wasn't about the cussing there's just other there's other comedians that just there's this real idiot comedian who likes to take his shirt off. He's this big fat guy and he puts takes his shirt off. Don't know. And he's very famous, makes a lot of money, but he's but he's generally considered a hack by the other comedians. And they're wondering what the hell is going on with the world that this guy's making so much money being a complete loser. Well, it's like this guy, um Mario Lopez, is that his name? Um he's a Latino comedian. Um what's his name? That might be his name. He's absolutely unfunny, but he's, he's had a career, you know. Um, now, you see, this is the kind of comment I don't understand when I see these things. Tommy says, you think Seinfeld's stand-up is funnier than Bill Hicks or George Carlin? I never said that. I never said anything like that. But you see here someone saying I said that. Because he's putting it, you think, Seinfeld. Uh, if he said, do you think, then that would be an appropriately worded question. I don't know who Bill Hicks is. I never saw his routine. George Carlin is independent from Seinfeld, and they're both, uh, you know, uh, top of the line comedians. Uh, I'm not saying one's funnier than the other. They're very different, but they're both at the very top of the list. Um, yeah, I, I know this, Tommy, but the routine wasn't uh, about fucking his girlfriend for a half hour routine in the comedy club. That's the difference. Okay. Um, which is pretty much the content you see now. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a cheap way to attempt to get a laugh because they don't have the material. It's, it's just true. Okay. Uh, Andrew Dice Clay is just uh, never funny at all. And I'll tell you who I never thought was funny, even though he had a lot of success, was uh, Sam Kinison. Uh, but the guy I, just screamed, right? He just screamed. Yeah, now he was on the Carson show more than once, and Carson seemed to like him a lot, you know? Well, he invited him back, but... Um, I thought his routine was shit, and uh, you know that's just hey, what can I tell you? You know, I think he died a happy man, though the the, the rumors about how he died. <laughs> well, he died uh, in a car crash in California desert or somewhere like that, um, uh, uh, high on coke or something. Well, I think his girlfriend was uh, performing Servicing some act him at on the time. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he was uh, high on coke and he crashed his car. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I have no idea who that is, uh, Bert. Uh, yeah, never heard of that name. Well, you don't want to. He's horrible. Yeah, right. It's interesting. There's a thing about like Joe Rogan. I tried to listen to some of his stand-up, and it's actually horrible. And um, he still is well loved by uh, comedians because uh, you know he's just he's just a nice guy that people like to hang out with. But he he'll bring all these bad comedians onto his show to try to keep their careers alive. And, mm -hmm. and it's sort of like a cancer because these other guys are saying, Oh no, don't, don't, don't put him on your show. He's going to, he's going to become famous and he shouldn't be. He sucks. <laughs> yeah. To me, uh, you know, Barney Fife, the character is, is a million times funnier than anything <clears throat> Sam Kennison ever did. Yeah. And, but you know, what can I tell you? Right. It's um, no, I mean, there's some, there's some, there's some um, excuse for personal taste, but there's certain things like if somebody likes a certain person who's got no nothing funny to say, like, right. uh, what's her name, the um, the fat blonde chick who's who's oh Amy uh, Schumer, oh God, if you like oh. her, I don't know, there, you, there is there yeah, any is there any anybody who would be a fan of Amy Schumer is a mental case. There's just no, 
it's just black and white and uh, she, she is just I can't even describe how disgusting she is as a personality ah Oh, yeah. oh, Shane Gillis is good. I liked him. Uh, um, I just found some of his old Gilly, Gilly and Keen, or not, no, Gilly and Keed, or something like that. He, he, he was part of a two guy. Uh, uh, I he had who pretty hilarious. I never heard. But of he's him. it's famous because uh, Shane Gillis was going to be a part of the uh, Saturday Night Live cast, and then somebody dredged up something that he had s said in a comedy routine like years before, that was not politically correct. And so even before he got on the first show, he was kicked off the cast. They just banned, they, they canceled him. But then uh, because of that, he became so famous that he started doing very well as stand up and he got invited on the Joe Rogan show and everything. And now was it was just last weekend. He's the host of SNL. So it, just like uh, Norm Macdonald, he went from being kicked off NS SNL to being the host of SNL. And it was it's a pretty funny turnaround. So I thought that was good. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea who he is. Yeah. Uh, this you know, um, I just forgot what I was going to say. Never mind. Doesn't matter. There are some other good news. There's Ryan Long. It's got these funny five minute shticks on YouTube. Oh, no. Um, there's a guy named Kyle. What's his last name? That's done some pretty funny stuff. No idea. I have no idea. And anyway, there's a lot of really good stuff going on right you know now. It was an absolutely horrible sitcom. I mean, really just awful. Was uh, Sybil Shepherd did a show called Sybil. Oh, I remember that show. Oh, it was absolutely just awful. It was a laugh track a show. No audience, you know. And um wasn't funny at all. Nothing. But they had a celebrity, you know, leading a uh, celebrity name. And they built a show about her, around her, and they just used a laugh track, and it was just awful. I don't know how long it ran, but um, there are people out there who probably say, well, she was great. Well, she wasn't a great show that I liked. Moonlighting with, uh, it had uh, Yeah, uh, Bruce Bruce Willis, and that was, they did a lot of really funny things. I did spoofs on, uh, like, Star Wars and stuff. It was, it was really great. It was, it was, it had some of the same flair as uh, Seinfeld. You know, like, Seinfeld would have that show about, like, the Merv Griffin set or something. They had things like that where they would, the whole show would be around the theme. And yeah, it would I, be never, I never watched that show. It's also like that show with Candace Berg and Murphy Brown. It wasn't funny. That was just political. Yeah, there were people who liked the love of that show, and it was a hit show, but it wasn't funny. I mean, it was you an, could say it was something else, but it wasn't funny. They yeah. had, all you have to know is, did they ever have a, quote, very important episode, unquote? You know, if a show ever had a very important episode, that means it sucked, because they were basically Not trying right. to shove some crap down that's your throat. Right. Well, it's the same thing with that sitcom uh, Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, and, oh God. Uh, that show was not funny. Yeah. And there was I, I I can't remember the name. Was it Swill and Disgrace? Was that the name of the show? Swill and Disgrace? I, I don't know. Or was it Will and Grace? I'm sorry. Will I must I yeah, must I must have missed that. I mean that that was a very important show that we had to watch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That woman who played the uh, the co-star in that, um, she's a super California lib and I've seen her quoted in some, you know political comments she makes and she's just an idiot you know political idiot but, um, oh psych psych is that the one that's it's a it's a guy who solves crimes uh by uh, pretending to be a psych uh it's sort of a, a funny version of uh the mentalist and i never heard of that show it was it, it, psych was a good show it was, it was it was sort of like monk uh if you're oh, monk i, I love monk Monk was an interesting show. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so Psych is sort of like a, a crazy guy that, that solves murders by, you know. Yeah, by, you see, Monk was not a mean character or a mean show. It was just well-written, uh, interesting uh, performance uh, storyline, you know. Uh, I didn't, did I say Ellen Degenerate? I didn't mean to, but if I did, well, you know. <laughs> I met her in person at a Rite Aid. I was at, uh, on Larchmont, uh, Larchmont Boulevard, what they call it, Avenue, I forgot in LA and I was at the Rite Aid uh, cashier line and I turned around just to, you know, whatever. And um, uh, she was there standing with her girlfriend at the time, uh, Anne Hesch. And um, this is, you know, just street clothes, no makeup, nothing. And uh, um, Ellen is, uh, I can't even describe the way she looks. It's just, oh. <laughs> 
Lurch's sister. <laughs> uh, Anne Hesh was just a uh, uh, pastel, I mean, a uh, pale skinned uh, nobody. You wouldn't even look twice at her, just standing there. But just, you know, a lot of people are like that, you know, without the lights and the makeup and all that. Uh, you know, uh, they just look like nothing, and she certainly didn't. But Ellen DeGeneres is just, just, um, ugh, ugh. Like, what do you do? You, you, you have to, you have to go with one of them. You get Ellen DeGeneres or Roseanne. Which one are you going to pick? <laughs> what they you know, call that? The... No choice. I mean, you got, uh, you got three choices. You get uh, one. You got to spend the night with uh, Ellen. In, in the room, or you got to go with Roseanne, or the third choice is a bullet in the head. You know, there's no, uh, I, I don't know. You know, if Ellen, if Ellen DeGeneres rolls over in the middle of the night, you don't have to worry about being crushed. <laughs> oh, I mean, if it came down to that, I would ask the guy, I said, Well, regarding that third choice, uh, well, what caliber bullet are we talking about? You know, exactly, I want to make sure it's not, I want to see, uh, you know, uh, let me let me weigh this out exactly here. Uh, oh, it's awful. Yeah. Um, oh, and you know, awful person. That story came out a year or two or three ago about Ellen. Everyone on her show was complaining. She treats them all like shit, <clears throat> and uh, she's an asshole as an employer, and she screams and yells and just awful, awful person. Then she had to do one of those public apologies, you know, on her show <laughs> because the PR was so bad. You know, oh, she's how, how can it, I can the one thing I can understand about a show like that is they're going up against like 10 other people doing the same show. They have all these faded stars who have for some reason somebody's decided is, is a great host of an of a interview show. Mm -hmm. And so they're constantly fighting against each other for ratings. So I could understand the tension. But at the same time, you're making millions of dollars an episode in some mm -hmm. cases. I mean, it's crazy. And so. Uh, you know, and maybe you're kind of tense, but I could just see yelling and screaming at the producer or something. But as far as the people who are moving the cameras around no, and stuff, she was talking. This was uh, she was treating the office staff, uh, the low-level people. You know, uh, just treating them like shit. And this is all documented. You know. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. I think like like someone like uh, Conan O'Brien, he was well loved. So even when they had the writers' strike, I think he was paying out of his salary. He was paying salaries for all the other employees mm -hmm. to keep them, you know, you know, housed until yeah. the writers' strike went out. So you have mm -hmm. the exact opposite, you know, example in that case. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, all right. We're going to put the link up one last time. Anybody would like to come on the show, and of course, anybody means well, you know. And uh, we could talk about cu English cucumbers, uh, tuna fish, uh, sitcoms, uh, Tom Cruise, Jack Reacher, or anything else. And um, otherwise, um, how long has this been on? Well, Tommy brought up a really important point. It looks like Trump is on the ropes now because uh, Nikki won in D.C. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, there was a D.C. primary. What is that? One vote? I mean, one. Uh, there was like uh, 2,000 people voting, and she got like yeah, 1,300 votes. Yeah, D.C., you know, well, you know those ballot, the balloting system in D.C. is totally honest and above board. You know? Well, if you're going to find rhinos, you know, anywhere in the country, the rhinos are going to be in D.C. Well, the population, the residential, I mean, the actual population of people who live in D.C. are, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Well, see, let's just say, I don't know if it's an open or closed primary. It wasn't very many people that voted, so I think it was closed. And, you know, you only have a few thousand Republicans that actually live in D.C., and they're going to be all rhinos, or most of them yeah, are. Anybody so. worth their shit uh, lives in Maryland or, you know, uh, Virginia, yeah. Florida. Yeah, Virginia. Um, for the most part, yeah. Uh, Tommy, Deep State is now one, and uh, Trump has 100,000. Now she can drop out. Uh, yeah, you got that right. And we have another guest. Hello. Hey there. Hello. Hey, Sean. What's going on, guys? Oh, we're talking about cucumbers and uh, Jack Reacher, Tom Cruise movie, and sitcoms. Yeah, I heard some of the sitcom. Uh, yeah. Cucumbers. Are you, so, are you going to tell me uh, who uh, Rachel Brady is or Russ Rachel Brady is? Do you know him? Do not. Well, uh, let me uh, 
uh, be an intermediary here. Um, the question is, are you going to tell me about who Ross Rachel Brady is? And his answer uh, is kind of like, um, no. And that's because, <laughs> that's, I think I could say that's because he just doesn't want to get into it. Doesn't want to deal with the topic. That's all. The best thing I can tell you is uh, go on the Archie Luxury channel and uh, and uh, watch them. Any episode, yes. that's it. Yeah. Yes, because it's not something that can be described. Uh, that would. Uh... <laughs> I love it. Okay. Yeah. He's a man of. Uh... And little Dave says Ross is so awful that you stick around and watch. Well, I can't. Uh, I can't watch him. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. Once you've seen things, you can't unsee. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Shot has some extra information on that, yeah. Uh, Shot, uh, what are your, uh, throughout your life, what would you say are some of your favorite sitcoms or the ones that you thought were just awful? Do you have any comments on that? Well, I never liked Roseanne. Mm-hmm. Never liked Seinfeld. Okay. Uh, all right. Most of the most acclaimed television shows, I avoided them like the plague. Uh huh. Okay. Can you rattle off a few that maybe you really did like or do like? That's kind of a problem because. 99% of them I never liked. Okay, well, what about going way back from your childhood on TV? Anything that you remember that was really good or you just don't have the interest in watching TV sitcoms? Or I mean, you know, well, you know, if I went back that far, you know, you, you had the Jeffersons, you had the you had Archie Bunker show, you, uh, All in the Family, you had, mm -hmm. um, you know, Sanford and Son. You had you had all those classic shows. That right. Well, those were funny. funny yeah, shows. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I I saw some show. Um, Most of those were actually created by Norman Lear. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I saw some show. I don't know the name of it, but it's got that guy, who, uh, one of these. Um, oh, it was. I can't even. Describe, it was just absolute garbage. I can't even. I won't even say what what the situation on the show was. It was just awful. Uh, Tommy says, "Shot only watches birds." All right, Tommy, you want to hop on the panel? Why don't you hop on the panel? Join in the fun. Okay. Uh, they said Ross was a bank manager or worked for a finance, and this is all an act. Ross told me he did stand up. I wish he would do his stand up routine instead of the usual. Uh, yeah, I heard he was a. I don't want to talk about it. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we'll just change. I'd rather talk about English cucumbers or uh, sitcoms. <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, the, the, the great. Um, yeah, I've heard that, so I, I don't know. You know uh, the great sitcoms are still great. Uh, Andy Griffith Show, The Honeymooners. Um, I guess you could say I have a Lucy, of course, you know, though I'm tired of that show. Um, you know, uh, whatever, they're still funny, you know, and the Andy Griffith show is still going to be funny in 50 years for a whole new generation that it's, uh, even though some people, it's maybe still funny 60 years maybe, later, maybe some of those storylines are so old fashioned Americana that people, some people now would not be able to sit through it They go, what is this shit? And they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to watch it because it's slow and clean, and uh, the storylines are so simple, you know. And uh, they need the insults and the foul language, and you know. So I, I don't know. Yeah. What are those things they're talking into, and why do they need somebody to connect their phone call? Yeah, right. <laughs> what is this? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, What's this thing on the desk? Exactly. Right. Yeah, but that show was one of my probably top ten most favorite shows of all television. It's just uh, so well done, and the 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 characters in it, they're all so good. Especially Floyd the barber, you know what a hysterical character. Yeah. 
<clears throat> but um uh Forbin says crampy were you ever a regular at a bar where everybody knows your name no never no is that a cheers reference no nope didn't like it either i'm not a bar a bar going guy and uh, of any sort of bar i know someone's going to make a wisecrack there and um cheers to me was never funny i never thought ted danson is funny the guy looks like lurch you know and i, I just find him one of the most unfunny people on television uh, Lurch was funny. Yeah, uh, Lurch is funnier than uh, than Ted Dance, and also, um, you know, who's that other guy? Kelsey Grammer. You know, a lot of people love Frasier, and I uh, yeah. no. Nope. In that case, I'm just going to say, well, it just wasn't for me. That's all. I didn't like Friends. I, I didn't, I didn't find Cosby Show. It just, no. Yeah, I don't find him interesting as an actor or anything. You know, no matter how intelligent he might be, he's just uh, not of any interest here. Okay, Mike says. The amount of votes cast in the Republican D.C. primary, 2,000 votes in the city of 700,000, reflects why people of a certain party can't get impartial trials there, jury pools of heavily biased partisans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like the O.J. Simpson trial. You know, you get a jury of your peers. That jury was not of his peers. His peers would be the Beverly Hills Hollywood Bell Air crowd. Get a bunch of millionaires on the jury, showbiz millionaires, bankers, you know. And they didn't want to be involved in that. Real, get you know, get some real estate, get a real estate tycoon, a Beverly Hills banker, a financial analyst from Beverly Hills, get a studio executive, get a movie producer. Those are his peers. Get a golf course uh, owner, you know, not not the people on the trial jury. So, what a joke. Okay. Crap, that was funny. Inspiration yeah. for piano man. I don't know what that means. Oh, the guy who goes uh, to get a hit, hit, hit uh, what is it? Uh, no, that was his, his friend was uh, got a stand-up bit in L.A. I don't know. So there was, yeah, there was a funny comment. So Norm McDonald was doing the fake news, and after the verdict came in from the O.J. trial, he said, it's now official. In California, murder is legal. Correct. <laughs> yeah, and Bob, Robert Blake also, you know, what a case that was. Man. Well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm on Blake's side in that one. <laughs> you know, there's um, so much information about that where <laughs> one could uh, seriously think, well, now, wait a minute. You know, but uh, then again, it's, it's so much to make you want to think, well, of course he did it, but or planned it. But there's a lot, there's so much going, ah, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you're going to do it, do it in California is the answer. Exactly. Oh, yeah. uh, God. And they say, think does they're talking about you if you're of a certain color, you can't get justice. But if you've got, if your color is green, i.e., you got a lot of money, oh, you got all the justice you can yeah, pay for. It's, uh, you say to the lawyer, you know, uh, okay, how much justice do you want? <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, the lawyer says to you, all right, uh, you want a fifty dollar an hour justice? Well, you're going to lose. You know. <laughs> You want uh, the dream team at two thousand dollars an hour? You will get you a victory. You know, for the most kind of like uh, if you if you had to have the best attorneys ever, two of which were television attorneys, and that's Matlock and Perry Mason, and and a real attorney Johnny Cochran. That would be the dream team. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's not bad. It's not a bad idea, you know, because maybe they they don't know the law, but if they have the right uh, staff, you know, they can do the presentation real well. They can they can win over the jury. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, funny thing about Raymond Burr, the Perry Mason actor, is um, uh, back uh, 80s, 90s. Uh, there's a law school in California in Stockton, University of the Pacific. It's a regular university, and they have a law school. And uh, I was looking at the catalog uh, for whatever reason, and he was on their board of directors or board of trustees. It's a Raymond Burr, you know. And I thought, mm -hmm. why, why would any law school put Raymond Burr on their board of trustees? He's an actor. He's not a lawyer. 
you know, he knows as much about law as, uh, again, you know, the janitor, as Ross Rachel Brady or the guy in the supermarket. Well, thank just you, plays one on TV. But what would be the reason they would want Raymond Burr on their board of trustees? Because it makes it stupid. Yeah, but it, it makes it look uh, like a you know, ridiculous... He has no qualification to be on a board of trustees or whatever it was at law school. Unless they just enjoy him for fundraising uh, dinners, you know. And that's the reason. To come over and tell stories and, and people pay to come for a fancy dinner. But Yeah, I don't know. Well, there's like, I mean, I looked at the board of directors of my company. And my company's like an engineering firm. And not a single one of these guys is or women is an engineering. There's like... If you think of everybody that's in the, uh, you know, the politically correct, you know, I, you know, the check boxes, we mm -hmm. got one of every check box, and then th that's all they're there for. They're all check boxes. Mm -hmm. They're not there to. Get, I mean, uh, basically, the CEO is the is a, is the chairman of the board, so it's just like Disney. You know, Iger is the CEO and chairman of the board, and he basically just tells these people, "This is how we're going to vote," mm -hmm. and they all vote because they get an annual salary. I don't know, like mm -hmm. fifty, sixty, seventy thousand bucks, and they get to go to Bahamas or whatever for their quote board meetings unquote. <clears throat> they take their whole family there, all expenses paid. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what happens. So yeah, the uh, the process of yeah, how do I get that job? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the process of jury selection, uh, as in the OJ case, was exposed to be just an absolute farce. And um, yeah, the people in that jury had just clueless. Just it was the same thing with the Michael Jackson jury. The evidence on him being a pedophile was so overwhelming, so clear cut. But yet uh, he got off. People just wouldn't believe that uh, it, he could have done it. In more ways than one. Uh, yeah, right. And um, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, there was this thing about the uh, the prosecution. They they kind of overthunk themselves when they try to pick jury members. They thought mm -hmm. that if they had more black people on the jury, they'd get a conviction because the black people would be jealous of how he had this white girlfriend. And so they would find him guilty because they would be envious that he had had this white girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, and that's like overthinking. That was so it was so screwed up by the prosecution. I mean, the uh, they didn't even include evidence of uh, the Bronco chase on the 405 freeway. You call that a chase? Well, you know, and uh, the police pursuit and um, the low speed police pursuit with, where he had a bag of cash and his passport and a mask. That he, you know, in the back seat, you know, and that was not included in the evidence. They just, it, it was an open and shut case. It was just unbelievable. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Yeah. I've been watching yeah. the Rust. Oh, the Alec Baldwin case. Oh, geez. I was watching the Alec, uh, the uh, Rust witnesses. Prop master describes a double action means the cylinder swings out. Are you joking? Unbelievable. Seth Kenny on camera accidentally pulls out live round to a cop on you, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, someone actually said that the prop master said that's what double action means. You open up the cylinder. It doesn't surprise me. Well, yeah. I saw a story on uh, YouTube. It was a short video from Oklahoma City. There was a judge. Did anybody see this? There was a judge on Oklahoma City. She just got fired from the bench, removed. Uh, during a case, she was texting. During the case, what, during the trial, she was texting back and forth with her bailiff, 500 text messages. And she also talked about um, sex jokes and uh, genitalia jokes and uh, all, all kinds of sick fucking shit. And uh, that got leaked out somehow and she was immediately removed. There you go. Anyway. Yeah, the glove thing was just bullshit. Just unbelievable. Yeah, anyway, enough of that. So. Yeah, the, the troopers around here would have already ran him off the road, cuffed him, stuffed him, and probably beat the shit out of him at least a dozen times before he ever Yeah, if, if that OJ murder case uh, was in a different state, 
Yeah. It would have definitely been different. Yeah, no question. Yeah. Like in Nevada. He'd been to a punch. He'd been uh, uh, George Foreman's punching bag. Hmm. Yeah, like in Nevada where he got on that armed robbery. You know, I heard someone on one of these channels say, well, it was his stuff, so I don't blame him for going in and getting his stuff back. Yeah, but he did it at gunpoint. He had, what, three of his thugs with him at gunpoint? Yeah. Uh, he had already that. sold that crap at least twice. Yeah, I mean, so then that's not, uh, hey, hi, it's uh, it's OJ. Can I, can I come over and talk to you about getting my stuff back? It's a little different than, you know, going in there with three uh, Mean Joe Green looking guys and uh, guns and, you know, taking your stuff back by force. So, yeah. yeah. The Mean Joe Green references of the size of the guys, because I met me, Joe Green, and the guy. I never <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so I know that's going to get uh, twisted, of course. But uh, Yeah, anyway, so. And people uh, said, Sean, uh, what's your opinion on cucumbers? Tasty. Tasty. Uh, do you regularly buy them or rarely? I don't regularly buy them. Yeah, no. right. So, well, we got your input there. Okay. But they, they, are, they are definitely good in the summertime because they retain a lot of water. Yeah, there's uh, people who, maybe it's just in the movies, I don't know. I don't read beauty magazines like... Uh, like glamour, so I don't know, but um, uh, if people put the uh, cucumber slice on their eyes at the spa with a facial mask, and it's supposed to relieve wrinkles and stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen that before. Who knows? Well, it's possible. No, I've seen that in uh, I've seen it in movies, but I've never never been into the, into the spa. Yeah, in the movie Bugsy, uh, Warren Beatty was doing that at the uh, at the fitness center, the the health club, whatever. Anyway, so um, hmm. And that's the thing. There's a lot of ways you can get cucumbers. I've been, that's the thing. The reason I'm cooking for myself is it's a lot cheaper. I can save a lot of money. So I have I yeah, have more right. cucumbers when I'm eating out and I'm having a salad. But I don't know if I want to eat out so much anymore, even if it's yeah right. Get that salad, but I need to eat more more. I know I need to eat more vegetables, so. I'll probably going to actually probably going to go out and get myself an English cucumber and start making some uh, fresh salads for myself. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, I guess there's a lot of varieties, a lot of uses for an English cucumber, but uh, the point is, I guess they're pretty tasty as an alternative to a regular cucumber. So. And they make a really good pickle. A really good what? Pickle. Oh, pickle. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I think uh, we're at the end, unless anybody would like to have any comments on anything. Mike's talking about a Gordon's breakfast cocktail. You can, instead of floating the, uh, the cucumber on the top, you can also, what they call, muddle it so you can get the cucumber flavor inside the drink. I don't know if that's, if that's, if that's what a Gordon mm. is. But. Cucumber is used um, as a fragrance mm. in uh, soaps. Yeah, I, I get that soap. It's good. It's uh, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, yeah, it's fresh. Right. Yeah, and um, yeah, I guess uh, other people didn't want to come on the show, though they were pretty chatty in the uh, in the uh, comment section, which is always good. Yeah. Well, Tuesday is Super Tuesday, and um, I already yeah. voted. Yeah, Nikki Haley is not going to drop out. She's going to stay there to the very end. And my my thinking, which I've heard discussed, is she's just got the support of the big millionaire Democrat powers behind her, and they're and the plan is hopefully Trump will just get thrown in jail or disqualified or whatever. And at that point, uh, she'd be the only Republican. They're already leader. admitted it anyway. Yeah, yeah. So that's well, the, the thing, thing about it. The thing about it is, uh, if he gets through Super Tuesday. With more than fifty percent of the total electors, which he would, which he, which he would get, yeah. Then even if he gets thrown in jail, uh, Nikki couldn't just win out the rest of the um, the uh, primaries. Yeah. Right. So there would still have to be some action, and so she would be 
no more likely to get it than say Ted Cruz or somebody else that the people at the convention would put in, in place mm. of, of him. Well, even if he's in jail, I mean, he's still going to be president. <clears throat> And uh, I'm not going to get into any details on that. But uh, well, you know the 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 whole thing that everybody misses on this subject is that they've already arrested him. They've already done all this stuff, and if he's in jail, but they quote unquote he's not a convicted felon yet. Mm -hmm. um, then he can still serve as president because, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, until until he has a high crime or misdemeanor, uh, then no, that doesn't mean what yeah, everybody because, thinks. It does. Because someone's arrested doesn't mean that they're guilty. Right. It's totally irrelevant. Yeah, but uh, we're talking about uh, Biden, Obama, America, so. Yeah, anything can happen. But um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they need to have their heads removed from their. Yeah, I mean, he's the most persecuted man, uh, in the last two thousand years, if you know what I mean, and it's really true. Mm -hmm. Or you could say the most unfairly persecuted. Yeah, you know, and and I and I will say this: you know, Trump is no saint. He doesn't walk on water. Uh, you know, but uh, well, he's absolutely right when he says. Uh, uh, he's the only thing standing between uh, them and the people and yeah. uh, total control and domination of everybody and it's absolutely right but you know anyway let's get back to cucumbers but i think we've covered that fully so uh 18 people watching let's take a look at the thumbs up Let me refresh that page i think and the only thing that i six, had about a measly six thumbs up i think the only the only Dishes that I've seen where cucumber is cooked are like Indian dishes. If I'm, I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the only other times I've seen cucumber is it's always fresh. You know, it's always like in a salad or a drink or, or on a topping of some sort. I've never seen it cooked. Someone had said that I'm not aware of uh, cooked cucumbers. Yeah, but I, but I think it might be in some Indian cuisine. They do some really interesting things. I don't know if I agree with it, but they, I think they do do some things like that. Yeah, I don't like Indian food. I've never, I just don't eat it. I like it. Well, everyone likes it. I'm, I'm on the outside on that one. Oh, but the only thing I like is the tandoori chicken, but who can't? I mean, it's just roasted chicken, right? With a little bit now, of red. That, how do they prepare tandoori chicken? Are there any funky spices on that, or is it just a roasted chicken, or what is it's it? It's got a red color, but it's not spicy. It's it's a little very tiny spicy, a little bit extra flavor. But if it's done well, it tastes as good as any roasted chicken. And of course, naan is just the, you know, it's just uh, bread. Those are good. They got this garlic naan, which is good. Garlic and flavor. And flat bread. Yeah. The, yeah. Thing about, the thing about all those things you're mentioning, which might be really tasty for me, is when, when I pass by, just walk in front of an Indian restaurant, not even go inside, just stand outside. The smell from the spice, the spices they use, it's so nauseatingly stinky. Mm. I, I can't stand it. It's just the worst. So I don't know what they use if it's, um, <laughs> you know, uh, those spices. Some of them, I, I used to know what the name of it was. Uh, I forgot the name, but um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, what is yeah. Tommy saying here? Over 4,000 inmates have escaped from Haiti's main prison. You mean today? Oh, that explains Obama. Okay. Well, they're on their way to the Mexican border, so that would be good. Right. Well, but it's interesting because how can you tell 4,000 inmates from the rest of the Haitian population? <laughs> they're all uh, criminal. I don't know. Pretty much. Uh, uh, the Clintons are, you know, they're friends of Haiti. Maybe they can do something. Right. Um, is, isn't that the new location of their... New yeah. party place? Who, I don't know. Yeah. And that's where they uh, they spent, they collected millions and millions of dollars to try to create housing for the people from the earthquake. And when the mm -hmm. investigators went to look, they had built like one model house and the other millions just kind of disappeared. So Correct. there you go. Yeah. Oh, Nothing happened to white water all over again. Yay. Hmm. All exactly. right, so um, 
I think I'm out of material here. Um, I mean, I'm out of energy, I mean. So, um, I'm going to poke my head in the fridge, see if there's any rotting food I can eat. And um, that's about it. Any, any last thought, shot, or spring, or anybody? Mm, no. Yeah. Thanks. I'll just say good good night. It was nice chatting, and uh, I yeah, I like the comments in the in the chat as well. A lot of good yeah, right. uh, yeah. interaction. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Thank you, Shot and uh, Spring. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next next show. Is going to be pro uh, coming up soon. It's going to be weasels, is the topic, uh, and jellyfish is another show coming up. Uh, oh God, we're not going. So we're going to be talking about Republicans again. <laughs> no, no, no. But the next show is jellyfish. I've got them all prepared. And then weasel, uh, uh, maggots, worms. Oh, see, so you're uh, talking about rhinos. You know, all the all the different varieties. Well, of make of it what you will. But, you know. uh, uh, all right. Uh, so there you have it. Thank you, everybody, and see you later. Good night.